future trends that we're focusing on to impact systems change um, in the trend atelier community. But first, I want to ask you, why do you think some forecasters and futuring creatives are able to create an impact while others are currently feeling perhaps separated from a sense of mission and find it difficult to access support and kinship uh, or even a certain kind of insights? I'm, I'm curious what you think about that. If you want to put that in the chat, you know, why do you think some of us, you know, they're here, we're designers, we're, we're forecasters, we're generally very much focused on the future, but why do you think some thrive in their sense of progress, both personally and professionally, why others feel isolated or even overwhelmed? So in this session, I'll share perhaps not all the answers to this, but some of the things we're trying to do and what you know we feel is, is needed to, to change this. So I'm seeing comments in the chat, amazing. Um, but just a little bit about myself. I'm Geraldine Mori. I'm a fashion futurist, designer, educator, and founder of the Trend Atelier. And I've led teams for some of the biggest fashion brands, uh, especially in the US. And I've, I was also previously a senior forecaster for WGSN. And about almost a decade ago, I dedicated myself to my independent relational practice. And at the time, I had to think really hard of what I wanted to achieve. And today I work with leading global agencies and brands who hire me as strategic partners and independent voices. But I also obviously, I'm constantly in touch and talking with my students and community members. And I also guest lecture at universities. So knowledge is very core to what I do. Um, I work with generally uh, brands who are very focused on innovation. I also work with innovation agencies and it's quite diverse. Uh, but my thoughts are regularly published in, in the global press. And what I did, one of the things I did is place climate justice and sustainability at the very center of my practice. I'm a founding member of Fashion Act Now, and my father is an artist. He's also um, an organic farmer and other things. So I guess it's a, it runs a bit in the family. But um, I, what I wanted to say is that creativity is also very central to my work. And so I collaborate with organizations uh, such as Dazed, or I've done collaborations with the Dutch Flower Council and recently the Tom Dale Dance Company. And I'm really passionate about how creativity fits with, within the futuring space, within forecasting. Um, so I was able, I guess, to, to figure out there's something that I think really helped me out very early on is figuring out my mission and my calling. And it wasn't just uh, thinking about it, it was like writing it down. Like, and at the time I, I was alone, I didn't have a, a coach. I wasn't, they, we didn't have communities like platforms the way we do today. So I was very much trying to figure it out on my own. And I guess that's what, one of the things that's led me to education is that I think uh, for me, it's also a lot about sharing what I've learned. and. So the trend actually gathers experts and beginners also. We're all at different stages, not just even of experience, but perhaps of how we feel in terms of our confidence or what we want. But uh, in general, what unites us is a feeling, a need to kind of change the world. Although that might sound like very ambitious, but you know, it starts with a grain of sand. It starts with the individual. So. Today, you're going to discover why you and, and we need to dedicate time to community and what community actually means. And um, I, I hopefully this will help you immediately uh, from just attending the session. And um, if you're a forecaster or a future and creative, but you aren't getting the sense of impact that you need, or perhaps you're not getting the support you need, um, hopefully you'll stay with us for the full hour and discover what we've done and what's been kind of life-changing for us. So the goal of this session is kind of simple, is to help you understand why a type of collectivism is critical and outline the key trends that we're focusing on this year. So um, I'll show you the first steps to achieve a type of mindful growth with lasting power. We're not about big growth, big network, fast, fast, fast. I wanna know more, I wanna grow my business. Of course, we're here to support people in their career development, but we're also very much about alignment and clarity and who you are and what you're going out 
uh, after and also your own personal growth. And that's because that's, that's what sustainability is. It's about building something that is, has longevity and, and starts from the inside out. So let me ask you everyone, are, are you ready for this? Or are you ready to kind of talk about this or start making this happen today? If you wanna just add in the chat, but one thing I'd like to say is that the term community in general, let's face it, is over, overused. You could say that there's a kind of community washing been going on. It's probably one of the most annoying buzzwords. Um, but so before we dig in, I have to warn you about something that I think is critically important and not paying attention to this could cause some frustration if you're looking to be part of a community experience and make a difference. And so right now you might think that community about is about connecting online or in person and meeting people and being part of a platform. But you know, what if that's not what community actually is? What if instead you had a whole new sense of community? And I guess this, I get this might be different to some of the things you've been hearing, but it's, you know, it's natural that we're craving community in times like today where we need something more intimate to make sense of the, the noisy world we're in and real connection. But I just want to clarify that to us, community is a place for culture. It's not a platform. Anyone can have a platform. Anyone can pay a subscription to a platform to host a community. For us, a community is systems change that starts from the inside and it's about learning and testing ideas and exchanging and being inspired by others and really experiencing positive triggers and connecting authentically. So, and knowing that there's certain types of connections you can't scale. So, and it's also about real personal support. We connect on a very personal basis. We're a small community. And so it's about opportunities and new horizons, but, perhaps, but not opportunism, if that makes sense. And more questioning and listening and using uncertainty and the sort of uncertainty that we're all in together um, as, as a strategy, as a great place for, for growth. And a community we don't feel is a place, it's not an online forum. It would be a stretch to call an online forum a community. It's not about fake connections where it's about I'll scratch your back, you scratch mine. It's, it's, a, it's not about always also hearing the same voices, having insights or future reports where it's always the same people you hear about or saying you're a community, but then you don't really provide the support. And it's also big thing, perhaps not what you expected about more and more content. There's a lot of content already out there. So we're trying to like, do something more meaningful. So why is it critical you get support and resources right now? Well, if you look at how human beings learn, it almost happens, it's almost always in a community. Of course, there are certain solitary skills like designing, like writing, certain stages of design can be quite solitary, um, but generally it's the feedback you get and the exchange that becomes a critical part of the improvement, even when it comes to a product. And, society is facing mass, a mass reorganization and there's new alliances happening with decentralization and a hope for redistributing power. So there are large social, planetary and technological changes, some positive, some less positive, that where there's some inequality. But I think all of us are aware cognitively of these issues and the more we feel we're contributing to some kind of outdated system, the more we experience feeling lost. And also there's a lot of noise out there. There's a lot of sameness and hype. So that can also contribute to feeling sometimes a bit lost, hence the explosion of communities. But, um, and I'm sure you might have tried to benefit from being a part of a community and perhaps it didn't quite work. But um, from my experience in terms of launching a community, it's, it's not as simple as people make it seem. And it's really about creating a culture and that's, that's, that's really the key. It's about creating a safe space and uh, something where pe people don't feel like they're drowning in the noise and that they're making real human connections, even if most of us in the community haven't actually met physically. So, um, so I guess in today's session, I'm gonna share how we invest in purpose-led foresight um, and have the several blueprints and I'll share one of them today. But the fundamental shift, like I said, is to, 
community is about creating a culture and that's very personal and it's not something scalable it's not something you can automate you have to put in the time you have to you know have those one-to-one -one conversations and uh you know the way we approach our community and that's like our template but you know there are many communities that have different templates um is we have two angles and I'll share this. And then after that, I'll also share a tool. But if you feel like maybe you've been floating or hopefully this will serve as a tremendous resource to, to anyone who feels like there's some frustration or friction in their process that they're trying to eliminate. Um, but essentially mission guides everything. It guides our projects. As individuals, it, guides, it should guide our client selection, how we show up, our big picture goal. And it feeds how also we present ourselves to the world and, and, it's, and internally who we are, it's not performative. So maybe you're a researcher, maybe you're a forecaster, maybe you're an artist or educator. I, either way, hopefully you're in the right place. And, um, and really designing and future forecasting is about mission. And this is very different to when I started, which it was very much about delivering the news. And what I've learned is that future foresight is about relationships. It's actually not necessarily about chasing future trends. It's about thinking in systems actually and not trends. And the system starts with you. It starts, you know, what is your system and what is a system without a mission? I, I don't think it's anything. I, and uh, so it's about creating a new map of values uh, ideologically to kind of um, create this groundswell of change. And maybe that sounds a bit utopian, but that's what we're literally trying to do every day in the, in, with, with the community. Um, so we share tools, insights. It's not just about talking and having these wonderful ideas. It's about also trying to manifest that and what are the like pragmatic tools. And I think that in the community, essentially many of us end up sort of mentoring each other <laughs> through the chats, through the one-to-one -one contacts. And it's that type of mindset really about searching as if we're all in there together, sort of searching for new ideals and aware that we're in a big transition. When the people speaking to you today, she's very focused on the metaverse and NFTs, you know, that's the world, like the future world also that she's envisioning. And as a society in general, we're going through a massive transition in every sector, every country, every locality. It's about relearning commerce, new systems, relearning how we create concepts, how we value future trends, what is the, what is the validity of a future trend. And, you know, I think we could agree that our current or past individualistic society, I guess it worked in terms of building a certain level of wealth, but it's also been very much based on control and competition. And, and, and there are many systems out there that also have created a type of social anxiety and also destroyed resources not just planetary resources, you know, human resources. So um, we've developed a framework because um, also I personally, I saw and worked with, I know so many forecasters and, and creatives that are very led by the future that become either frustrated or felt sidetracked while, while trying to grow their career, but also knowing that there's all these changes and how do I make this all work? It just all feels very complicated. And um, so uh, I could go on and on, but essentially, um, you know, to, for full transparency's sake, that was my story too. And in truth, so many of us are, you know, are a reflection also of, of my own story. So before I share with you the framework, I just want to share that um, I personally knew I had to create a mission when I started my business 10 years ago because um, I was trying to find meaning in my life. And I felt like, obviously I wanted to be creatively and professionally fulfilled and be well-respected and all these things and have a name for myself and all of these things. But it wasn't necessarily, I was also seeing that I was constantly chasing the new trends, more and more trends, feeling like a bit on the rat race. And that made me feel a bit empty somehow. And I had to listen to that. And to be honest, I doubted I could kind of find a formula somehow that would work for me because 
I was a little bit alone in this. I didn't have a coach. I didn't have a community. I, I didn't, didn't have a mentor. And, you know, if any of this sounds familiar, please, please, like, listen to the chat. I'll be, you know, reading all of it. Absolutely. I'll be answering as soon as our guests are speaking. I'll be interacting. But I think I felt a bit overwhelmed. Like, I love teaching. I love sharing. I love creating. But then I love future foresights. Like, how do I bring it all together? And also, how, how do I do something where I don't feel like I'm constantly chasing the next trend? Because to me, that sort of also felt a bit un unsustainable so I set out to find a way to make it happen and once I did that and I'll share the tool <laughs> shortly once I got past my fears and began investing in my beliefs I started seeing massive growth like I started getting more clients actually the copy on my website started being real because it was from me I started feeling this alignment um, and and so I set out really to it gave me this confidence it gave me the sign, you know, I need to keep embedding purpose, kinship uh, in my work. And then the, the school started in 2019 and then ensued the community. And the community um, has allowed me to grow. It's not just work-wise, but as a human, it's been incredibly fulfilling. So it's given me also that further sense of alignment that I hope everyone will experience. But I do push my clients also to focus on big picture climate and social justice. And it's been really my dream for years to combine future insights with the type of learning methodology, because we're all learning at any stage, even if like you're the most forecast, famous forecaster or designer in the world. And so one thing I've been asking myself is, you know, what does creating a better world actually mean? Like everyone's saying that, which is amazing by the way, but also like, if we go further under the hood, like how do we really manifest that in the day to day? Like how do we apply that? This is really challenging. And the, these are why we're trying to develop tools to, and obviously it's we're delivering it, but we're also iterating it. And it really starts with a learning experience. And I've seen how it's made an impact uh, in my life on um, students, community members, and. For me, it's really not about scaling this, which I know sounds maybe counterintuitive as, as a business, but again, future foresight is about relationships. So I just wanna say, we look at it from two angles, like this is the formula for, for our community anyways. That's how um, sort of I drafted it, but the thing is that I'm just the community founder and the community goes through a stage of then people owning the community. And that's like kind of the stage that we're starting to get into, but this is the exact vision uh, I followed to create the community that hopefully meant we were all experiencing some growth because I just really felt like forecasters and future and creatives, we really need support. And it's not just about more trends. It has to be made easy, accessible, has to be authentic. And so, um, you know, so it was about future insights to lead a better world, but what did that mean? Like, how do you actually, you know, come out of a future trend report that has like these amazing, inspiring insights, but then how do you like manifest that? So we felt like it was very important that our community and the future insights that we share, that we're really seek, seek sorry, different and alternative perspectives and methods. And this is to create a space for emergence. So we're not trying to also repeat what everyone else is saying. We love what everyone else is saying. It's not about that. It's just also trying to look at it from different angles. It's about also long-term vision. So taking a view of success and consequence, like a sense of responsibility for the future that you're somewhat you know, colonizing through your predictions. And also looking at future insights, not only as a way to expand your horizon, to you know, give great product ideas or service activations, but to expand your horizons, your tools, your mission. And so again, you know, we develop interactive ways to do future forecasting sessions. But then the flip side of that was also look, taking like a systems approach and looking at regenerative futures. I'm a fellow of the Royal Society of the Arts and I'm like really dedicating time to studying regenerative thinking. And um, so for this, what, we've, what we're developing really is a a way to challenge how we forecast, even down to our metrics and our methods of how what makes a valid trend, and also 
thinking about forecasting for circularity and circ you know and new systems or going away from short-term thinking to really build capacity and reciprocity and also within that tools and blueprints so again to help everyone sort of work from the inside to the outside and so how we manifest this is collaboration projects so last year we did a collaboration with Pure, but then this year we're collaborating on a future trend report in the fall and then training workshops. Uh, I do quite a lot of one to one calls with the members. Um, getting feedback on our projects. Also, we have an entire space dedicated to that where we're also creating a feedback blueprint to really you know, create a culture again of how we show up when we ask for feedback and when we give feedback. Uh, we also do member stories to celebrate our members. And it's just in general, it's about hopefully experiencing change uh, in, uh, in a personal and professional way, but also like tackling the real life challenges of forecasters and creatives who are trying to, to design the future uh, on the day to day. So it's not just about having these wonderful ideas. It's about how do you drive change? How do you even deal with your clients within that? How do you represent your work? What kind of tools do you need on a practical level? We recently delivered a tool with a ton of digital tools for like the day-to-day -day running of an independent uh, business. Blueprints, again, um, I talk a lot about that, but um, this is a quick snapshot of our values and charter. And um, I'd love to hear from you what you think, if you think that looks like something inspiring or maybe too abstract or, you know, what would life look like if, if, if you had this on the day to day, let me know in the comments and, and I'll respond to as many comments as I can. Um, but so the tool that I was telling you about is your mission statement. So Ololade is gonna share a link with you that you could download this tool immediately. And for those of you who are our community members, it's also obviously in the community. And we had a whole uh, session on this as well. So this is not like something that we're gonna do right now because you can work on your mission statement for weeks, if not months. But the, the purpose of creating a mission statement tool is to help you break down who you are and how you show up so that you can cut through the noise. And to be honest, I'm due for an updated mission statement. It's something you can do like at any stage of your life. I think my mom who's 84, I think she might be redoing her mission statement right now. She's kind of like redesigning her life. So, but essentially it's about cutting through the noise, even like your own noise, like your own self-talk so that you're clear about your priorities. So this is like a simple PDF that you can, um, download. I'm not sure if it's playing right now, but um, we have a bunch of download links and resources. I don't think that um, the video is showing all the slides, but would be great, hopefully, is that through, from this, you can identify obvious areas of opportunity for your current situation. And um, I'd love to hear your feedback. And I'm going to email everyone in this session and ask you, like, you know, what did you think about the mission statement? I hope you won't find this invasive. Please put no in the comments if you don't want to be emailed. But the reason is that we can't do this right now. You have to actually download it. We have our sessions, our Q&A after tomorrow on the 13th and then on the 20th as well so that you can, we can talk about it. We can follow up on this. But this is a tool that is fundamental and is essentially the beginning of, of, um, driving change and feeling this alignment and it matters to our community and I think it matters to everyone to be be clear on your mission because that essentially informs everything else that you do it has a massive trip, trickle down effect so next I just want to introduce our amazing guests who are also a reason you know what can I say? Like, how do we foster an amazing and unique culture? And it's, like I said, going from community leadership. Obviously, when I started the community, people joined because I started it and they were either students of the school or knew my work. But it's, it's, it's not about that. It's about moving to ownership and celebrating the members. And our community is small. 
Okay, it's intimate. We don't have thousands of members. And I think that's what makes us very different. And the purpose for everyone is for everyone to have a voice. So I'm really excited to, to have our guest today. And we have members, obviously, who work for big companies, but we have also many members who are independents. But I just want to make it clear, we're not a B2B community. We're really here to serve independent minds and citizens of the world. So without further ado, I'd like to uh, these are our three guests, and we're going to start with Aude joining us from France. I'm going to uh, stop sharing the screen, but our special guests will share how they embed purpose in their work, what are the future trends that matter to them, and, and what community means to them, and they'll have about five minutes each. I'm going to stop sharing. So I'm going to pin you, Oud, so that you're center stage, Thank and you, you can tell us a bit well, more. Hi, Geraldine. Hi, great to see you. It's great to see you too. Thank you for having me. Um, you know, a lot of things you shared already ring the bell because if I look back when we virtually met like two years ago, something like this, because I took the school, I took the class with you. Um, the first thing about community that's coming to my mind right now, it's how much we exchange things. Like even when we talk the day after you send me Instagram voice message saying, oh, I thought about this last night, blah, 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 blah. And it helps a lot. So it's not only very, you know, only talk like this. It's uh, sometimes it's an everyday exchange, um, even if it's super short. Uh, sorry, that's that's into bracket. That's something I wanted to share because I, something came in my mind uh, when you say that. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing You're that. <laughs> You're welcome. I so, guess uh, it does take time. Sometimes someone says something in the community and then it like macerates in your head and you're like, oh, actually, and then, you know, all these asynchronous that, exchanges happen. That, as you say, that's the strength of being an intimate community also, because yes. when you read something and you, 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 can, you can think about it and, and share it on the platform as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I'm going to mute myself and, and <laughs> listen to you. Okay. I'll try to be short. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm super happy to see uh, so many people coming from everywhere, actually. That's great. Um, I, my name is Aude Penuti. I'm a fashion designer. Uh, I've been trained for that, but I've been doing so many different things. Uh, so I actually not designing much now. Um, I'm not going to share a lot about myself because if you want to know a lot, there is a full video that uh, Geraldine already released last Friday as a member story where I explain my way of working and of thinking my work. But basically, if you think about me, um, I've been working a lot abroad. So it gave me some um, insight and some way of working. And today I'm, I'm saying that my work finally is being a cultural broker, which means I always use um, the culture as a leverage to start a project, for instance, because I've been working in USA, in Italy, in Asia. I've been living in Africa when I was a child. I'm from France. So I had so many references um, to take a project, to start a project from, from scratch. And I realized that I've been working as a, a designer, a freelancer for some trends um, uh, offices, like, uh, like a trend forecaster. Um, I've been working in a production field when I was in Asia. So I've been working in, in factories, but also in sourcing companies. And I started my own business eight, eight years ago. Um, this is a sourcing office and a, and a creative solutions office called Entada Textile. Um, and uh, what we are doing, it's once again, very diverse. So to be able to gather all those skills and all those experience, um, I decided to take culture as the, the way to drive myself in, in the work. So that's how I come to work with designers, factories, fabric fairs, uh, digital press, uh, schools, all those kind of uh, targets. Um, recently, I became uh, a B Corp uh, member as a B leader. So um, it means that I can go uh, with company to work on, with them to the application of uh, B Corp certification. So I am not B certified, let's be very clear. 
I'm an, a B Corp ambassador to be able to drive company willing to become B Corp. Um, and basically, in terms of action, what I deal with is I create, I do a lot of research, I write a lot. That's why uh, the community tools are very useful for me. Uh, it, it helps to focus and to drive my ideas. And something I really enjoy also doing, it's transmission. That's why I, I teach in schools and uh, I give master classes about, about uh, sustainability in sourcing. Uh, I have different kind of customers. I work for uh, the Swiss luxury group called Richmond, uh, for whom I'm doing like uh, very innovative and sustainable fabric research. But I also work for the Landry Fair in Paris because my expertise as a designer is focused on lingerie, swimwear, and sportswear. Um, what else? What else? Uh, I'm doing some uh, color trends for, uh, forecasting for uh, some fairs. And uh, I also work with uh, newbies and uh, sustainable native brands. Uh, I love that uh, because they are giving me a, a new way of working, a new way of thinking trends, and a new way also of thinking about predictions uh, and stuff like this. Uh, another question was, uh, I'm French based uh, now. I'm living on the, on the southeast of France um, and a lot are, are, is happening um, on the digital way now, I have, I have to say that despite the fact we can once again meet each other, a lot of my business is still happening uh, on on Zoom and on and on VC and all those things. What else I can share? Yeah, you were asking about the trends. Uh, uh, the thing I'm focusing right now, and I I agree with you, it's very difficult, um, and somehow it's. There is a paradox in between thinking about forecasting and trends and like sobriety and that which are the things we are advocating for as, as uh, working in sustainability. So to be able to take this challenge, I, I just, re asked, I mean, I decided to restrain myself in dividing my work and doing only twice a year trends research. I'm not doing more. Uh, I'm focusing on colors because the, I've been asked for that. The rest of my time, I working with um, designers to be able to um, set up their predictions. I'm doing a lot of research about fabrics because uh, fabrics, it's the base in our industry. You have to know, and uh, probably you already know that up to 80% of pollution in fashion can come from the sourcing. So there is, and when I say sourcing, it's fabric sourcing, but also industrial sourcing, meaning the factory you, you're gonna pick up to, uh, to um, manufacture your product. So I decided to focus on that. Um, and right now um, in Europe and in France, especially, there is a lot of things happening, especially in the legislation. So one of the things I'm really, focusing now, it's measuring things, what we save in terms of carbons, in terms of energy, in terms of fabrics and so on, to be able to avoid the, what we call the rebound effect, which is super bad for uh, our industry because the rebound effect is when, when you try to do, uh, for instance, you will buy uh, organic cotton from China because you think that's the best, it's uh, coming from a uh, fair trade, uh, factory and so on, but most of your business in, is in USA. And uh, you're using a very uh, technical uh, art craft and uh, skills that you can only find in uh, India. So separately speaking, your things are right, but when you put them together, there is a lot of rebound effect because the things are going to travel. Or another example, right, I, I see a lot now, it's, and that's very difficult to separate greenwashing from the goodwill, is like all the carbon neutral things I can hear about, all the compensation and so on. There is a lot of critiques to, to, to think about. So measuring to be able to take the right decision 
go with the right tool and to answer in terms of business. Because what I'm asked for a lot now, it's the skills about how I do understand the supply chain in terms of all those measures. Another thing I'm very focused on is circularity, uh, because I strongly believe that's the future for sourcing for many reasons. And um, thank you, that's what? great. <laughs> yeah, circularity. I want to try and embed that in the forecasting system as well. But do there's we, a lot of know? happening now. Uh, yeah. I'm going to lead a, a, a conference for a fair in three months, which is called the Tipping Point of Circularity, uh, oh, where wow. I'm going to have um, um, guests from all the supply chain. So from fabric makers to brands with in the middle solutions of circularity, because I believe that you have to adapt to the company uh, you are facing. It's that's when I, I mentioned cultural broker, this is also about adaptation. If you yeah. go against the will of your customer, or if it's not ready, you're gonna lose the truth uh, for them. You're gonna lose them. I'm gonna put your link tree in um, the chat so people oh, can you. connect with you because that sounds amazing. And I know gonna... that Oud has a newsletter, but I'm gonna have to pass on to our next guest, but. That was so, so interesting. And I please everyone do connect with Ud. She's a wealth of knowledge. She's writing about these things all the time. And her work is very embedded in futures as well. But um, thank you so much. And just one word about yeah, community. Yes. Community is one of the five pillars for B Corp. So for me, that's obvious. Amazing. <laughs> yes, absolutely. B Corp, I love everything that they do in terms of community as well. But, it's not um, perfect, but that's a great tool. And you know, it's not about creating something perfect because if there's something I've learned, it's just about being very transparent, I think, and, and, and being open to iterate and constantly improve and learn from the feedback, you know, really listen closely. Um, but I'm gonna pass on to Anne-Lise, our next uh, guest. And I guess I have a section at the end um, where I'm talking about the future trends that we're going to cover in the community. So if I can just ask our next two speakers, uh, five minutes each, but so that we can try and like cover the time. But again, everyone, put your questions in the chat because we I will we I will follow up and uh, and I'll pass it on to Anne-Lise. Thank you, Geraldine. Please give me a sign if I speak too long. <laughs> no, no, no. It's, it was, it's all actually really yeah. interesting. And to be honest, I after, after the fact, I felt like I should have booked this session for an hour and a half. Like we needed a lot more time. It was so interesting, Aud, what you were saying. And uh, really great to be here. Thank you for having me and seeing all these faces from across the world. My name is Annalise Lizzie Prem. I'm a brand strategist and a future trend expert based in Salzburg. And I cannot actually believe that I'm saying this, that I am a future trends expert. And it really has so much to do with this community and with Geraldine. I think we met two and a half years ago, three years ago. I also took the school like Aud. And uh, then I became a visionaire member and I kind of really felt like um, I was getting the tools. Uh, Geraldine was sharing all her resources. I was seeing how she's working. And also through the community, I met other people. Uh, I'm also doing a podcast now. And I had, for example, Rhiannon, who's part of the um, community as a guest to talk about femtech. So um, there's really uh, like such a great, uh, on the one hand, a lot of resources and a lot of very in-depth knowledge that Geraldine and the whole community is passing on. But on the other side, there's also, oh, sorry. I have my son's in Paris. So I just had to, <laughs> to keep the phone on loud, but it's not him, sorry. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. Um, yeah, so uh, on the other side, it's also this, uh, these people that I'm meeting through the community. And also I'm connecting with them on Instagram and on, on other, on LinkedIn. And it's just becoming so much more and feeding into my work. And yeah, I was always a communication strategist, but I had a big passion for future trends, but I was based in Salzburg. At some point I was also based in Uganda. I was never really somewhere like Paris or London to uh, feel like I could call myself a future trends expert. So this pivotal moment in time right now actually propelled me into 
finally doing what I have a great passion for. And I really uh, am, am, am so happy that things are working like we're doing this year today, a virtual meeting on, uh, yeah, with this community. And um, yeah, to finish off the trends that I'm seeing, I'm focusing on metaverse, digital fashion and NFTs right now, because that's such a big topic. And I actually also see a lot of community spirit going on in the Discord channels that are part of all these NFT projects. Another trend I'm seeing is the sustainability that Ort was also uh, talking about. I kind of really like the phrase fake is the new real. Um, I love how Stella McCartney is doing the Milo leather and all these new materials. And I'm fascinated by people researching new materials and new processes in fashion. Another thing I'm also seeing is like a lot of uh, about feminine masculine kind of shifts going on this whole female empowerment topic and gender fluidity. But um, I've also just done a really, really nice project with Red Bull. Uh, they have a fashion line and they were defining the Red Bull woman, which was very exciting to do when you see how gender and how Gen Z is dealing with everything right now. And I've also been working just recently on NFTs with a Porsche, a Porsche driver, a, a woman for a female race club. So there's a lot going on how women, uh, Jen said, and, uh, and even new aging is going on right now, how we're seeing women older than 45, 50. And another topic that I'm seeing is a lot of mental health uh, things that are popping up everywhere, communities uh, in real life, online. And that's also something I'm very, very much uh, looking at at the moment and very excited about. Yeah. I think it's you're fun. also a, a, an NFT curator. Uh, um, you're one of the yeah, only. I'm like, also, uh, there's so much going on at the <laughs> moment. I can't keep track of my projects. I was I like, was, she's <laughs> like, that's so, when I read that, I was like, that is, I didn't yeah. even realize that. Yeah, I'm part of uh, that. I, I like on your, on your Instagram that you're always sharing really interesting NFTs that are doing things for community or giving back. And, but yeah, if you just don't want, want to tell quickly what this thing is that you're doing yeah. around NFT curation. <laughs> Yeah, I, I signed up and I actually got selected to be part of Randy Zuckerberg's project. Uh, she's uh, Mark Zuckerberg's sister and she's doing The Hug, which is something, um, it's going to launch soon. It's going to be a platform where you have vetted NFT projects because the big problem is all these rug pulls and you get cheated and you have these uh, like bad experiences having scams happening. So she's decided to come up with a platform where there's projects that are being curated by us. We're like 300 around the world. And at the moment we're going through a process of choosing projects and uh, female led projects, which is also uh, very exciting. And yeah, I'm very happy to be part of this. And I've also oh, started collecting NFTs myself just for the process, not to become a millionaire. But <laughs> Really it's too late for that. Too late for yeah, that. if anyone knows interesting projects, shoot them over to and Lisa. Yes, please. <laughs> yes, please. But I'm gonna pass on to our next guest. Thanks so much, and Lisa. That was great. I put your links in the chat, but if there's Thank anything you so else much. you want to share. And um my our next guest is Barbara Strabel. Barbara is a trend researcher. I'm gonna unmute um unmute you and oh you you're on are you on mute and I'm gonna give you the center stage. So if you want to like, I think you're muted, maybe. Uh, hi, hi, nice yeah. to see you. I if hope you want to tell us fine. where you're joining us from as well. Uh, thank you. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you previous speaker. I also want to mention that I'm a big fan of the content of Anneli's on Instagram. I follow, you know. <laughs> They are very inspiring. Uh, I'm connecting today uh, with you from Poland and uh, from beautiful city uh, Gdańsk. And uh, uh, I today I plan to um, share with you what uh, what is the most uh, fruitful for me from the community. Uh, I was also as uh, previous speakers. Uh, a student of the uh, Trend Atelier courses, and uh, they really uh, give me um, 
uh, more um, um, con being more confident in uh, what I'm doing and uh, help me in uh, my everyday work. Uh, I'm working uh, as a trend researcher in uh, one of the uh, uh, biggest uh, Polish uh, fashion brands. Uh, I'm not mentioning the name maybe because it's not the time for, <laughs> for it, but, uh, and I work as a link between a creative director and uh, product designers. Uh, so in, in my everyday work, I help to somehow translate the uh, vision, the future vision to, to real life. Uh, and uh, my study background uh, is uh, um, industrial design, but uh, I always uh, uh, like the most uh, research process in it. And, uh, and uh, luckily this community shows me that gathering uh, random uh, things can, uh, um, can be um, useful, uh, but also, uh, here I uh, start to better organize my research and uh, all the tools that uh, we uh, um, learn in the community um, um, help me to, you know, to use them more properly. And uh, uh, so I, I see... Um, my purpose in my work to help uh, uh, team members to uh, grow and to uh, develop somehow the ideas in the uh, in the way that uh, uh, we should uh, have a reason um, to do to uh, design new stuff and uh, not just to repeat and again and again uh, same uh, products. And um, how to say, uh, I have uh, focused uh, uh, on kids, uh, um, uh, kids department uh, uh, during last year mostly. And so I'm analyzing the lifestyle trends and uh, social uh, issues. Um, and so in general, um, community also helped me to have uh, more resources and to, uh, um, how to say it, uh, show, uh, gather different uh, different stuff in uh, one place and I'm really uh, appreciate the fact that I can be uh, part of the group uh, of so experienced people and uh, to um, join the events uh, with all of you guys the, that it uh, really uh, give me a uh, motivation for uh, uh, each day and keep the good spirit, uh, especially one-to-one uh, -one meetings in the community uh, help to um, define the growth path uh, <laughs> in general. So uh, I will say I'm uh, on the beginning of my journey with the uh, future forecasting. Mm, but uh, but I really uh, see um, the progress uh, since I joined the community, and especially the um, regularity of the uh, meetings forced me somehow to uh, to be more um, productive and also practice uh, English for in a professional. Uh, space, let's say. <laughs> Thank you yeah. so much, uh, Vazia. I find you're one of the most inspiring community members because you're always like sharing really interesting 
things and and uh, so thank you for joining us and yeah we think uh, Bazia was referring to this growth path tool that we have where we try and like guide people depending at what stage they're at towards the types of resources or things that might be helpful and, and we're still developing it to be mm -hmm. honest but thanks so much Barbara Bazia Barbara I, I always like <laughs> call you both names but um, I'm going to like move on because uh, we only have we had five minutes more scheduled so I'll totally understand if you have to leave but we, I think we're running probably like 10 minutes late but if you don't mind giving me another giving us uh, another 15 minutes of your time can you see the screen right now the presentation so I just want to say thank you again to, to our guests and everything you shared and you make the community and I just want to quickly say focus on the next 10 minutes on the future trends that we're focusing on and um, essentially you know we could have just done a community just on Santos and in education and ways of furthering your practice but we decided to have a future insights component um, not just because obviously that's what people also are attracted to. They want to have access to future insights, but also because um, the way we do futuring, we try and look at it from an alternative perspective. And uh, we try and harness future insights that may be like an angle that not everyone is talking about, or maybe it is what everyone's talking about, but we're always trying to see it from a different perspective. And we think that this is key for forecasters, designers, and futuring, futuring creatives, because it's about, it's those alternative perspectives away from what everyone else is saying. And there are increasing amount of data. In fact, Barbara posted one of them in the community showing how much so many of the future reports are saying the same thing. And um, there's too much sameness. So we try and like um, look at all of that and access new ways of doing future insights. And for us, in terms of sharing it, it's so that you don't have to work maybe harder or it's about working smarter and then getting that support. And maybe you're looking at, say, for example, the metaverse, everyone's talking about it, but like we'll try and bring a different angle or try and like look at it from a different perspective. So I'm gonna just quickly go show you what we did last year. But honestly, we're still talking about this in different ways. But last year, we had a format where we did a future trend every month, which was quite a lot, to be honest. But these trends are essentially have long legs. I don't even know if you can call them trends, they're movements. But we come up with the themes together, especially now that we're sort of gaining traction as a community. We have like a type of survey we share at the end of the month. And there's an internal team at the Trendate um, that works on research, but we also crowdsource the research within the community. And we're also, like I said, working, we're gonna start working on a future trend report that is collective and will be public at the end of this year. And this will happen once um, we've sort of onboarded new members and we're all together, the doors close and up, we can jump to the next big thing. Um, but when we explore these future themes, we have panelists, we have workshops. And so just to give you an idea, rewilding, when we talked about it, it was about being at one with nature, but it was very much about letting go of control. And we covered this as a movement affecting the world, but we also asked ourselves, what does rewilding future forecasting, what, that does, what may that look like? With human tech, obviously, we looked a lot at ethics, AI, tech for the greater good, privacy, and we looked at all the different projects and the, a lot of what was going on in terms of ethics. And with co-creation, we looked at education um, because that is actually a core focus for many forecasters in the community. Are, they're looking at education, what's happening in that space. And it was really about a deep also, co-creation for us, it's not just about collaborating, it's how, you, how do you create a critical dialogue? And this is actually a tool that we're going to start working on. And one of our community members is quite an expert in critical dialogue. So I'm probably gonna involve her. But with positive disruption, we looked at the future of activism and future strategies for activism and even hope as a form of rebellion. So see, these are some of the things that we looked at, but for 2022, what 
is really important for us is that the lab is everywhere as we search for new ideals and means of existence. And this is our mantra, and this is a mantra we agreed to as a community. And what this means is that there are topics, for example, if you go to the previous slide, you'll see we looked at waste, lab-grown, and supply chain futures. So if I'm just gonna go quickly to the next slide, this is embedded. The lab is everywhere. It's not just that we're growing materials in labs, like our life is a, is a giant lab right now. Like we're rewriting the playbook of so many things. And you know, in the things we're looking at, we suspect that in, by the end of this decade, our life might be very different. And so our next week on the 19th, we have our future trend presentation on care futures. And so we were doing the research and we were thinking instead of doing like a traditional future trend report, let's do a speculative future projection where we're actually in the present and let's pick a year and let's see what care futures means in that year. So it's a future scenario, but through that specific situation is how we start unwrapping and peeling like an onion, the layers of what this world looks like. So that's what we're working on. And that's what we'll share with you on the 19th. And if you can't attend, we have your email, we'll send you the replay. And if you're not on our newsletter, please do join. But um, so this environment, this world means we're looking at architecture, cities, food, and we're not going to like, because it's a speculative design scenario, we're not going to tell you all the latest trends in architecture, all the latest trends in cities, but that's the stuff we're going to kind of fan out in the community as a resource. And then Q3, so I think Q3 starts in July, we look at degrowth and the end of capitalism's future, because part of what we do in the community is try and really look at eco new economic models as well. Um, and that's not just for people who are working fashion. We have interior designers, architects, writers, uh, people who work obviously in the future trends field or in materials and innovation in the community. And so in last year, we had a presentation called Beyond the New, and we had another presentation called uh, waste and lab grown uh, materials in the supply chain. So we're going to kind of look at that and we have some ideas for exciting that, that guests because we already have our guests lined up on, up until the summer, basically. Um, so, and then the last quarter will be community futures. And that's not to like sort of try and like tap our own back, like, yeah, we're in community, but it's literally because we're looking at building new ways of working and lifestyle as this idea of collectivism rises. It's not just for collectivism, commons, DAOs, decentralized communities. There's a lot going on in terms of community futures. And we were thinking as part of this to also include a, a close examination of social media and how that might change and how we, we come together as a community at the moment on social media, how that's changing. So that kind of sums it up, but um, I guess we we made it the full hour. I'm always trying try to be keen on uh, staying on time as someone who really struggles with wrapping up a presentation in one hour. But just to say one of my favorite um, quotes is uh, by Gloria Slyman, a movement is a contagion of dreams. So I hope you got a lot of value out of today. And if you did, you know, please stay in touch and share or put in the chat any questions. And I just want to remind you that after tomorrow, we have a Q&A at 12 p.m. UK time. Then we have our next session um, on the 14th, so Thursday, where we'll go more in detail in, in when it comes to the tools and resources and methods we're trying to create a, what we call regenerative forecasting or that's kind of a, a, a broad term, but we're tr trying to like apply or create tools that mean that we can actually manifest the ideas we're talking about. And like I said, we're accepting new members. So although that is gonna share in the chat, the application link, if you haven't applied already, if you're interested in applying, um, we are taking new members. Our doors are opening at the end of this month. So. Thank you everyone for staying on a little bit longer with us. And um, I see, thanks a lot already, amazing to be able to join in real time.